Hey there guys, my name is Georgia. Welcome back to my channel, The Lazy Student. So, for those of you who haven't heard, Scottish students this week have been completely f over by the government and by the SQA when it came to their National 5 and their higher results. Students who were on track to get A's with their teachers predicting they were going to get A's have suddenly gotten B's, C's and D's. Nicola Sturgeon just took one look and basically said, off you f based on, and you're gonna love this, their postcode. What gave her this smooth brain idea, you ask? Well, let's hear it from the proverbial horse's mouth. If you take the 20% the most deprived, the estimates would have at the 85.1% of young people passing hires. Now, I, I desperately want to get to a position in Scottish education where 85% of young people in these categories pass hires. But last year it was 65.3, the year before that, uh, in fact the, the three years before that it was around 68. Now if we had said today that 85% had passed compared to those figures, all of the questions we'd have been getting here today I think with some credibility is how have you managed in one year to have that increase. So if you didn't hear from that clip, Nicola basically just admitted that students from less affluent areas did in fact do well. Really well, too well. So teachers predicted that 85% of students from these less affluent backgrounds were in fact meant to pass their exams. The SQA and other decision makers took one look at this amazing statistic and these hard-working students' grades and said, how about no, and decided that 125,000 of them, well, their grades didn't really matter anymore and they should be flushed down the toilet. Nicola said that in previous years, around 65% of pupils from less affluent areas passed their hires. Nicola then said that it would be unfair to presume the same group of students would go from 65% pass grade to 85% passing just because of some historic data. I spoke to Mr Barry Black, who is a postgraduate researcher of education in Glasgow, about how these supposed moderation decisions were made. So it was clear from the outset in March and um, it was understandable that the exam diet this year in Scotland was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And from there, it became increasingly clear that there was going to have to be some alternative assessment models that was um, introduced by the Scottish Government and the Scottish Qualifications Authority. So based on teacher professional judgment, um, the SQA asked teachers to rank and estimate the grades of their pupils within their classes based on a holistic assessment of their performance. So not one prelim or one piece of coursework, but a view across the pupil's performance in the whole year. What we didn't know till uh, results day was the exact methodology of how the SQA would then moderate these estimates. So the estimates were submitted, and from there the SQA said they would do a national moderation so that it was a consistent approach to um, results across the country. What we didn't know is that the predominant thing that they would use within these uh, moderations would be the historical attainment data of a school. So how well past cohorts of pupils in that school had performed. And what it actually meant in practice was that an A that was awarded by a teacher in an affluent school came under less scrutiny than an A that was awarded by a teacher in a deprived school. Although there was always going to have to be some form of moderation, um, is one that has inequality baked into it and is exacerbating the attainment gap through design. So the SQA had a range of options with them at the start and a very basic level, although it was warned about at the time because historical attainment data would still be used, they could have did what they said they were going to do and use a range of evidence um, with discussion and review with schools and crucially in their methodology used elements of individuals performance rather than a reliance on schools performance. Uh, but there was other options available to them, there could have been a delayed exam diet, there could have been a second exam diet. Um, as is going to happen in England. We could have relied wholly on teacher estimates. The key thing is here that if a school or a course within a school did not have any historical attainment data, the SQA accepted the teacher's estimates. So they have um, said that there was a need for this model, a need for moderation, which is true, but where they didn't have the data that their model relied on, they just waved the grades through. So there's a huge gaping hole within their own methodology there. But at a basic level, without you know, ignoring all those extra options, if the SQA just said, uh, just did what they said they were going to do, uh, some of this mess would have been avoided. What I would say that the appeals process is free this year, which um, is, is a good thing, it should be free every year, but they've made that decision this year. 
And the appeals process is built in a way that it does judge the individual's performance. So as we've talked about, there's 125,000 grades that have been downgraded. Um, and I think there's huge potential that almost every one of them will be appealed. So what young people have to do is work, work, with, their, uh, work with their schools to, to get these appeals in. But on a broader level, um, as we've seen, we've seen protests outside um, in George Square in Glasgow today against the SQA. We've seen a lot of activity on social media. People perhaps for the first time writing to their education secretary, their MSP or their MP. And keeping up this sort of pressure is going to be really important as well. In, in politics and in, in all of these things, there's a tendency for these big things to happen and then for it to fizzle out and go away. But it's such a profound moment and such a life-defining moment for so many young people. Uh, we need to keep up the pace and you know, ensure that at the very least it doesn't happen again and at the very best that you know, there might be something that can be done about the actual grades that we've seen um, distributed this year. As you can see, the way these exams are moderated seems to be different than what we were told in Parliament during May in the first place. So I don't understand how they've come up with this completely different method in a matter of months without really telling us until it happened. So going back to Nicola's interview, Nicola had two choices. Either keep the grades as they were and be moaned at by a team of advisors, universities and multiple different people, or be moaned at by some students, which obviously for her, are easier to ignore. The whole cycle just repeats itself and the gap between the richer, more privileged students from the good postcodes get all of the opportunities and their grades aren't touched, whereas the people from less performing schools or more deprived areas are left disenfranchised again. Can I just add that this is from a government who is pushing this no one path slogan? I really want to believe that this decision just involved a total lack of foresight for the students who have actually been deeply affected by these grade changes. But I thought to myself that surely along the way somewhere someone sat and thought, wow, there's going to be a hell of a lot of negative impact for these students who've been affected by these changes. A young woman who has truly captured her experience in an eloquent way is Eva, and she's taking Twitter by storm. A letter Eva wrote to her local MP is creating waves on Twitter and spreading awareness for just how messed up this situation is. I just did my hires. Uh, my grades were significantly lowered by my school and the SQA. My school teachers appear to have only submitted grades that they had written evidence for rather than what they believed I could get in an exam kind of situation in case they had been questioned or asked for evidence by the SQA but that didn't happen. The SQA then further lowered my grades based on statistics of the school's historical performance. This wouldn't work for our school anyway because we have a very small school so any statistics that they would have for our school are not valid because any one person could change the statistics for the entire school. Well, I wrote the letter originally to help me feel as though I kind of had a say in my results because I do not like feeling like I don't have control over myself or my future or anything like that and I just felt completely powerless when I got my results through. I just wanted to write to feel as though I could have control over it when, if I wanted to and I wasn't actually intending on sending it to anyone. I just wrote it just to get my frustrations out. I sent it to my friends originally and my mum and they all said that I should just send it because kind of there was no harm in sending it if I didn't get a response or whatever so I was like okay fine I'll send it but my mum said that I should send it to a few local people as well to kind of ensure that I do get some sort of response to it. I just hope my letter will kind of bring around some change for peoples across Scotland. Generally, yeah, people are being very supportive and sending all sorts of messages of kind of hope and just showing, kind of reassuring me that even though I didn't get the results that I hoped for, that I'm kind of not going to be stuck here for the rest of my life. <laughs> I have had a response from two of the local councillors. I got responses yesterday. Both responses I was very pleased with. They were very encouraging and said that they would bring it up to the Director of Education in the Western Isles. I wasn't actually planning on posting it on Twitter either. I only posted it on Twitter to show my classmates that I was I had written this letter and I'd sent it and just kind of showing them 
that I was trying to fix it for everyone. <laughs> my mum has spoken to me about maybe having to reset a few of my hires from last year. I'm not too pleased about that and my head teacher has reassured me that I should not change any of my classes for next year so far, that I should at least wait for my uh, appeals to come back through because I will be appealing three of my classes because two of which I would appeal all five but I can't appeal two of them so I'm waiting for those to come back through. I don't know how long it'll take what the process will be but so far I'm not changing anything for next year and I don't feel as though I should have to reset anything because at the end of the day I was going to pass everything and I was going to do well so I don't feel as if I should just have to reset the whole, use my whole year doing that lesson again, those lessons over and over, just so I can manage to sit the exam and get a fair grade. Well, I would hope that all pupils' results could be reviewed, regardless of whether they met their school submitted grades or not. But I would hope that if they reviewed them, they would then look at the pupils' individual performance from S1 to current because again, there's probably people in, that have just done their nat fives, never previously done exams, so they don't have that kind of evidence to back them up. That would, teachers would be able to show how they've progressed through high school and where they would expect them to reach in an exam. I would also hope that universities would reconsider their entry requirements because as it stands just now, none of the reviewing is happening. Um, so I would hope that universities would reconsider their entry requirements. Yeah I have found that a bit in my school. I know there are a few people that maybe aren't so disappointed with their results but I know all of my friends are disappointed with their results and won't be able to do what they wanted to do because of it. For example one of my friends wanted to go into dentistry, she wanted to go to the University of Glasgow. She was expecting five A's this year and she received three A's, a B and a C and although that's very good grades they're still not what she would need to get into dentistry. The thing is, although the majority of lower income students have been negatively affected by this, it has not impacted everybody equally. While some people are commiserating, others are finding it really difficult to celebrate their good grades. They're being attacked on Twitter for getting these good grades, despite the fact that they're also technically part of the deprived bracket. Natasha, who got some amazing grades that her teachers predicted her this year, also comes from a deprived school bracket. I spoke to Natasha about how in this this case there was no one-size-fits-all scenario and how it's the fault of the system and not the individual for what grades they got. I'm Natasha and I'm a student in North Ayrshire. I'm 16 years old and I stay in a children's home. So obviously we didn't get to sit at the exams this year but I sat my prelims in January and I got six A's and a C so I kind of already expected that I'd be getting pretty good results um, and then obviously on results day I I got up at like four o'clock in the morning, crazy, I know, um, and waited for the text to come through. And I got obviously all straight A's. And yeah, it was amazing. It was like absolutely crazy. I didn't think I'd ever, ever, ever get an A in Spanish. But before we'd obviously left, I'd put in a lot more work because at first I wasn't going to take Spanish at higher, but now I am. So I want to be a primary teacher. So it was kind of one that I needed. So I've like put in so much work and stayed behind school and I think my teachers recognised that and yeah, I can only thank them for it. At first, like before I'd really actually understood like why everybody was giving me so much hate because I hadn't actually at that point like watched the news or really heard anything about how they were deciding the grades. I was a bit like, wow, people really are just selfish and cannot be happy for others. That's ridiculous. And then obviously as the day went on and more people like obviously opened their results and then people like the news obviously like published how they were like deciding the results. I did then understand why people were so upset and I completely understand that. Like I, I do, it must be horrible to get estimated maybe A's and B's in your prelims and then get given C's on results day. Like that must be horrible and I can't imagine that. But <laughs> it was just... I do still think a lot of the hate I got was a bit like uncalled for because it got to the point where I was getting private messages like all day of just people calling me names 
and I had people saying that I'd bribed the SQA and everything. It's just like, do you actually realise what you're saying? And like people saying that I was from a posh area and I've got private tutors when it's so far from the truth. Like I can't afford that. I can't afford a tutor in general. Like all of the work that I put in was myself. And I think people just need to actually realise that, yeah, they were upset, but it's no need. There's no need in giving up to that hate. <laughs> On the day, it took a bit of the glory away getting like all the messages and everything. But now that I've un- I understand it a lot more, I do. And un- obviously, I get why people gave me that reaction, which I get. I get that. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it now. I kind of left it a couple of days before I started asking about whether, because I didn't know obviously at that point whether it would be a bit like a touchy subject for them. But yeah, I text them all and just asked how they got on and everything and everybody seems quite happy. The care experience one, I don't know yet because there hasn't really been much said. Obviously, like, there's been statistics um, already came out about how many people from deprived areas have had their grades downgraded. So there hasn't really much been about care experience people. I would be interested in that though, because that would be quite a, an interesting one. Because obviously Scotland are quite, they're leading the way really in supporting care experience young people. So it would be interesting if they have downgraded some people or whether they've gave them the grades. I, I don't know. Statistically though, care experience people generally maybe do get lower grades obviously there are like a lot of exceptions to that and some people do just blast that out of the park and they get amazing results for the deprived area when I do think in some areas they have just maybe looked at the school seen that in past years like maybe there's a C average in that subject so it's kind of it's right and they've maybe gave people C's for that which I do think is wrong because everybody's an individual person and I don't think it was right that the SQ themselves downgraded people because they don't know that student like, if a teacher has said something, then take that teacher's word. Like, they know that person and know the work that they've done and know how hard that they've worked to get that result. So I don't think that was fair in the slightest. So Natasha's experience shows us that this system did not affect everybody equally, even those all from deprived areas. This to me raises more questions about whether there were further factors that went into these decisions that the public just haven't been made aware of. Either way, we shouldn't be tearing down anybody for the grades that they got because at the end of the day, it's the SQA that decided to reduce some people's grades and not others. Look, I can't begin to understand how these students must feel. I was privileged enough to go to a good school, get decent grades and get into university. I can't even imagine going to school, working my ass off to get an A, believing I deserve the A, my teacher believing I deserve the A, and then still not getting that A. I cannot believe for a country who preaches equality and hashtag no one path, that the students who needed them the most are the same students that they have now let down. It might not feel comforting right now, but you need to know that your grades don't define you. Your postcode doesn't define you. And you're still going to go on to achieve great things. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I really, really do appreciate it. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe down below and let me know in the comments whether you've been affected by this situation. Special thanks again to everybody who was involved in the interviews. You guys are the ones who really made this video happen. Make sure that you have a really good week and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye!